All right. So we're going to cover uh, section 7.3, finish up sec section 7.3 today. We're going to take a look at uh, a pretty important theorem and then do an example of how to compute a generalized eigenspace. So the theorem that's in the book that's pretty important here is that if you start with a complex n-dimensional vector space u and a transformation, linear transformation t in L of u uh, with whose characteristic polynomial looks like this, so it, it factors nicely where you have multiplicity, all these, these lambda 1 through lambda k are all distinct roots, so these are the algebraic multiplicities of those uh, uh, eigenvalues then it turns out that u can be decomposed as a direct sum of the null spaces of, uh, of t minus lambda i times i corresponding to each of these guys but it's raised to that multiplicity there okay so that's pretty interesting you can decouple it uh, these guys are each invariant under t uh, and t minus lambda i, this is the important part, is nilpotent over this subspace. So if you restrict to just that vi subspace, you get all those cool nilpotent properties we mentioned the other day. In particular, one thing that's neat, the characteristic polynomial of t restricted to that vi is just the factor that it corresponds to. Okay? Which is pretty nice because that basically means that uh, you have only one eigenvalue, so you can mess around with the eigenspace, but the eigenspaces can get uh, <coughs> are t invariant, so like we mentioned the other day, now you have just a single eigenvalue on a nilpotent map, so you can keep looking at the, at the null space of, of t minus lambda i i to successively larger powers, starting with 1 and then squaring and then cubing all the way up until you get a basis for the dimension of the space. So the this theorem here, coupled with the theorem we said yesterday, basically says that there's a way to write down a basis for u that uses uh, vectors that are all in these kinds of spaces, these null spaces here. And those are called generalized eigenvectors. Uh, also note the dimension of the vi ends up being that. So this again is a situation where the generalized eigenspace vi uh, has the geometric multiplicity always equal to the algebraic multiplicity. So that's pretty nice. This is all over the over C. So now let's talk about how to compute chains of generalized eigenvectors. So if you start with a matrix A, a complex matrix A, a square matrix, and you have a lambda as an eigenvalue of multiplicity M, then the first thing you do is you compute a basis for the null space of A minus lambda I. Say it's this, V1 through VK. Uh, then you compute a basis, like uh, kind of like we did the other day, of, of the null space of a minus lambda i squared, which will include these vectors up here, plus a few more. The difference in the dimension between those two, uh, boy, I didn't finish that sentence. The difference in the dimension between these two uh, <clears throat> tells you how many different uh, how many different uh, cycles you're going to have besides the sort of just one cycles that we mentioned before. So we're going to redefine V1 through VL as as follows. We, we want to find a, uh, we want these vectors here to be compatible with the chains here. So since each one of these W1s correspond to a chain, let's redefine these guys, uh, 1 through L, to be the next thing in the chain here. So we get A minus lambda I times WJ this guy right here is going to have to be in the null space of a minus lambda i because if you hit wj with 2 with an a minus lambda i and then hit it again it'll be toast so these guys are definitely in there so let's redefine v1 through vl as these guys and then whatever's left over let's just relabel them so that they still span this so it doesn't matter what i pick at that point so that's how you handle getting a nice uh, easy chain to start with but one thing you gotta you gotta watch out for as well is that even though each one of these guys cycle to something that's in the null space up here, notice that if I take any one of these guys that I know is non-zero when I hit it with a minus lambda i, I can add to it any linear combination of the ones that a minus lambda i annihilates and it'll still cycle to the same vector. 
So I have a little bit more freedom than I might think, okay? So I can keep the cycle alive by keeping this guy in the, he's the important part in the cycle, and adding any linear combination of the stuff that a minus lambda i annihilates. So now I compute a basis for n a minus lambda i cubed. So here's my basis for the first null space, the second null space. All of these guys are now cycles to these. Uh, and then this right here. The difference here is now the cycles of, length, of length at least two. So now what we do is we try to solve an equation. We say, okay, well, I know I've got to start with something that's, in, that's a linear combination of these plus, um, sorry, there's a linear combination of all of this stuff because it, it can annihilate uh, in any way as you, as, you move, as you move along. So you say solve this equation of, sorry, let's do do it the way I said. Let's take a linear combination of these guys first and see if we can find that and then we'll add in some extra degrees of freedom if we need to. So these guys here, we want to find out the linear combination of these guys that maps to something in, in uh, this space right here. In particular, we want to try to map it to the W1. So what we'll do, plus some combination of the stuff that gets annihilated, because that would keep the cycle alive. So we say, what in the span of these guys, okay, maps via A minus lambda I to one of the WJs, plus some linear combination of the stuff that's in the nil, the null space. Because that's going to get killed when you try to go down one more level, and so the cycle will stay alive. And then you redefine UJ to be... Uh, that, that sum there and wj to be the sum here that you found in order to keep the cycle alive. Now it's set up that a minus lambda i of uj will produce wj and a minus lambda i on wj will produce the original a minus lambda i uh, on wj and these guys will all be toast. So you end up getting a chain that goes from a vector in here to a vector in here to a vector in here. And then you just keep repeating and doing the exact same thing until you have a basis with the same amount of vectors as the algebraic multiplicity. All right, so that's pretty much the basic gist, although there's a lot of writing here, so it's probably easier to do an example. So let's pull up Maple and take a look at, at an example here. Let me suppress all the, uh, if I can find it, let's suppress all the, um, All the answers. Well, I guess I can't find them. I spent forever looking for it. There's a way to suppress all the answers, but I can't remember what I did to do that before. But anyway, let's take a look. So here we got a matrix A. Okay, this guy right here. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to pull up the linear algebra package um, for uh, so that we have some linear algebra tools. And if we factor the characteristic polynomial in this matrix here, in fact, if you want. Why don't you, you could pause it now and try to give this a try. So let's maybe zoom in a little bit here so you can see it better. Okay, so here's the matrix we're going to try to use. If you want to write it down right now, you can try working this stuff out uh, on your own. Uh, but we're going to pull up some linear algebra information and then compute its characteristic polynomial, which looks like this. Notice that I've got a lambda minus 3 with a high algebraic multiplicity. Because the lambda plus 2 only has a multiplicity of 1, you know this only has one vector and it's I one dimension worth of vectors in its eigenspace, and it's not very interesting. This guy, however, has four, at least four dimensions of a generalized eigenspace. We don't know how much of it is diagonalizable or not, but let's see if we can keep going. So, like I said, the first thing that we should do is compute the null space of a minus lambda, so lambda right here is 3, uh, that's the eigenvalue we're going to look at, a minus lambda i, and convert that to a list. So when we do that, we get a basis, that's what Maple does, it produces a basis for the null space. I don't really like fractions, so I'm going to double this guy, and that's what we get here. Alright, so when I double that, notice I've got this vector here and twice that vector. Okay. And then the next step was to, con to look at the null space of a minus uh, lambda i squared. So when we do that, you'll notice that I still get the two vectors I had originally before, but I'll use these two vectors instead. Uh, and then I have a third vector here, which represents uh, the ne the, a new cycle. So I've got only one cycle uh, extra beyond what I had starting with, which means one of these guys won't have a cycle associated to it. So let's pick up this new vector here, okay? 
And if you look, if we hit it with a minus 3 ident uh, i uh, and take a look at v2, it looks like they're actually pretty close. In fact, this a minus lambda i w1 produces the negative of what we actually wanted. So let's redefine w1 to be its negative. Okay, uh, but, in, but notice we also <coughs> can include not only this guy, uh, well, or the negative of this guy to get the right cycle, but I can also add any linear combination of these two because a minus lambda i annihilates them. So that's what I'm doing down here. You notice I've got my negative w1, and then I've got a linear combination of the other two guys. Okay, that's my v3a. Now if you look, a minus 3 identity, identity uh, times v3a should produce uh, a v2, so that's why I'm subtracting it here to show that it actually equals 0. So if I take that vector and subtract v2, I get 0. That shows that they are equal. So my linear combination thing here is actually uh, uh, any vector for any AB is a cycle uh, in there. Now we look at A minus lambda I cubed. You'll notice we get an additional vector here too. And here we run into something a little bit tricky. So we've got this guy here. We know that the span of these two should be able to produce something that's in the uh, <coughs> should be able to produce something via A minus lambda I that would put me in the, this land up here. But what it, well, the problem is I don't know if it's going to land exactly on this guy or if it's going to land on this guy plus some linear combination of those. Okay. So what happens is, is that we want to take a linear combination of these guys, and that's what I've got here for W2, and we want to pass it through A minus lambda I and see if we can match it up with a linear combination of the guys that were in there before. So I've got here's my a minus lambda i times w2 minus v3a. Now v3a is what this guy is. That's the negative w1 is what I need in order for it to be a cycle. And then here's a general linear combination that doesn't affect that. So we put that in here and subtract v3a. We now get a system of linear equations and we we want this to be zero. So if I pick all of those pieces off and solve for zero, that's what this did right here for A, B, C, D. I see that A has to be one, B is negative two D uh, plus two, C is two, and D can be anything we want. So since D can be anything we want, let's pick it to be zero. Uh, C has to be two and A has to be one, but if D is zero, then B is two. So we'll use that and plug in uh, everywhere. So here we'll get that. Then we'll define that equation there. So V3 will evaluate V3A with that equation. So this is actually my new vector in my first generalized eigenspace. It's going to cycle to V2. And then I'm going to evaluate my W2 vector, which is this guy uh, <coughs> right, uh, sorry, not this guy, uh, this guy right here with that uh, those values of C uh, and D. So I put that in here and I get V4 is evaluating W2 with that equation. I get this right here. So the way I've got this set up, uh, solving that equation should have this guy cycle to V3, and then V3 should cycle to V2, wherever I put that, V2. The V1 ends up being the eigenvector that, didn't, that wasn't part of a, a cycle. So now let's check. So we come back down here, and we check by having a... Uh, Oops, let's make sure I define that. By having a minus lambda i times v4 minus v3. So this guy right here, a minus lambda i times that, should produce that. So if I take their difference, I should get 0. And then same thing here, this should produce the v2 from above. And so when I subtract, uh, well, if these guys are equal, then this guy squared times v4 will be v3. So then I'm going to subtract that from uh, v2. And uh, sure enough, I get 0. So that means that if I look at v1, v2, and v3, and v4, which is a basis of uh, generalized eigenvectors for the generalized eigenspace, you'll look that they're also in this cycle form. So I've got my lone eigenvector over here, and then I've got my cycle in descending order of uh, <coughs> powers of a minus lambda i times v4. And sure enough, it produces the exact same basis. So we're going to use this idea uh, next week when we talk about Jordan canonical form. Uh, we're actually really close to being able to do it. 
Uh, so cool. Well, you guys have a good weekend, and uh, send me an email if you have any questions. We'll talk to you later.